Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. What happens to a young man when you're taking him to school and he doesn't do his homework the day before, before the Halloween celebration? He does it in the car. And what happens when he does it in the car? He says he gets car sick. Welcome to my life. Won't you come on in? Yeah, so he's fine. Everything's okay. Everything worked out great. Uh, happy uh, Wednesday. Happy day after the national holiday known as uh, Halloween. Um, I hope everybody had a good one. I hope everybody had fun. Does this mean fun. that spooky season is over and the holiday season has begun? I think yes. officially this is the kickoff Done. of the Christmas season. Is it not? <laughs> Woo! This is really fun. You know, I could tell there's a sort of a magic in the air. Yes. <laughs> really? Oh, let me call Dan O'Brien. Seconds. Let me just make sure I talk to him. Sure. Because you know what he has to do? Bring you a drink? No, he has to put up the tree while we do the show. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Be sure so to start gonna go, the call. You're going to go for it um, November 1st. Yeah, it's time. Yeah, well, it's, you know, you've got a business. There's a different, yeah. I think there's a different schedule for businesses as opposed to you know home home is well home i think it's good it's a good time to do hey uh you put up the tree yes oscar yes you're on the air the michael mara show say hi for me please uh yeah he says hello uh michael mara says hello radio god michael mara says hello hello mr radio god how are you okay well you can't have a conversation so this this conversation this is going to stop dan you've been in broadcasting for years listen um it's hollow it's a halloween time is dead Take down the skeletons and the, the lumberjacks or whatever they're called, and lumberjacks, put, and then put up jack o' lantern, jack o' lantern, and then put put up the tree today, stat. All right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you do celebrate? Don't you? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure. O'Brien, okay. I think you. so. God bless. You. All right. Bye bye. I don't think that's a problem. Well, Hi everybody. He observes. Yes, he does. Uh, first of all, let me. Hi uh, Debbie. Uh, Debbie O'Brien. Debbie Carano O'Brien. Oh, Debbie Carano. I'm sorry. Um, pardon me if I'm a little logy uh, today. Uh, we had fun. I, I had fun with my other um, my other old dad buddy uh, with his two twins came over, and they, they for the second year, maybe the third year in a row, they did Halloween in my neighborhood, which is nice. Nice to have a neighborhood where mm. I can do uh, Halloween and, and, uh, in a section of my neighborhood, not on casket acres. Uh, where I live, but on the other vital, uh, throbbing Vibrant. families with children part of the neighborhood, uh, where we venture off to. Uh, the fertile side of the neighborhood. And uh, and kudos to my friend Mitch. Mitch, I don't play golf with you anymore, buddy, but man, you know what? A-OK for a $10 gift certificate for each kid to Chick-fil-A. That works for me. That's A-OK for me. I like that. Wow, that's a, Mitch that's a, is... Uh, oh, he's, he's always done it. He's the he's giving tree. Yeah. No, he's well, like he, really cool. You know? He uses his Amex points. He's very, very cool to do that. I like that. I like that he's... I think uh, one uh, year was another fast food joint and... Uh, and make very, it 100. Cool. Uh, that's Make a it 100. Much. Feed one person. What? Teach a man to fish. Right. Or, or what is it? Oh, teach dude. a man... Give someone some give bread. Give a man a fish. What did you yeah. do last for a day. Night? What did you do last night? Absolutely nothing. I went to bed at 10 p.m. like a loser. Oh, good for you. Yes. At I didn't four- go to, I, I probably went to bed at the same time. It just was, I was probably in a bit of a different state. Than, oh, I uh, wish I was in that state. I looked at Shannon and I said, a lot's changed since we were on the radio. Yeah. And she goes, yeah, we're living healthier, happier yeah. lives. Oh, it's absolutely true. And absolutely and even healthier. With the, even with me saying that, hey, I, I you know, Partied a little bit last night. It's not what a, not what it used to be. Well, you, what it you, used to be would be two, three, four yeah. in the morning. You, you don't. Then, you mean uh, we didn't have to go to a, a boo bash and then wake up in the morning and do and, a morning like, show? Yeah, and do a morning show and be chased boo, up the boo, uh, street the on M Street. Be chased yes. by a French fry going f you. We should have won. F you. Yeah, do people know that in the Washington, D.C., maybe it is a countrywide phenomenon, the professional costume contest winners that will try to hit like 15 bars in a night and yeah, win that, that all the contests? Tell. You know, if you yeah. go back in history, 
of uh, these great United States. That was a tell. That was a dumbing of America tell. Sure. Where uh, people put great import on that, and it's not cool. You know, costumes uh, are supposed to be fun and frivolous, and you're not supposed mm. If you're going out and, with the sole purpose of winning one of those things, I say, well, F you. Uh, <laughs> I, we I, I completely... I'm shocked that you have that feeling about a costume contest, Mike O'Mara. Why? A man because I, I did so many of them. Well, because we that's it's not for us now as you get older, but when you're younger, that's like if you somehow stumble upon what is a passion, something you're into, and you know you can make some of that costume money up within like the next three years of running around towns with that costume. Uh, especially if it's a creative guy costume, a girl costume, anybody can win. You well, just go to just the lingerie if store, counting, right? If you're counting on a hundred and fifty dollar victory for a costume contest on a Friday night, you are barking up the wrong financial tree, my friend. Yeah, that is plan. not gonna. That is not I, gonna get I, her done for you. I remember buying the costume from the NASA engineer, the at at. Uh, was that the uh, yes. Star Wars? Yes, yes. yes. And wasn't that a sweaty uh, parking lot deal? Yeah, it was a sweaty. Uh, Good memory. It was a it Great was a memory. sweaty alley deal next to my Oscar, condo. Like like got this. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna send this, this to Mac, uh, and then he can put it up. <laughs> Oscar acquired a. Uh, I don't know what they're called. You remember, right? At 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 from Star Wars. Star yeah, the, Wars at at the yeah. giant like walking battleship. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they were the from Empire, Desert weren't they? I think battleship yes. yeah. that that crawls on, and it was a it, it was a ten out of ten costume. Mm -hmm. But Oscar back in those days was doing a lot of Craigslist. Uh, you know, there it was his, a it was a it was a Craigslist acquisition. Craigs and and would put himself in grave danger. <laughs> Didn't you keep like a knife under your card card? Yeah, this is where your it car was. Seat? That's the costume, right? That's yeah. the costume. That's the costume. And then um, for, well, for well, me. Well, that's an actual at at. That's not Oscar. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sending him the costume picture now. That okay, I good. Have, good, so, good. Uh, let me just say this. I would always try to make these transactions in a public place. Smart. Um, and as of late, one of my favorite pastimes, because I don't think I've had any alcohol in roughly two and a half months, something like that. I was, I was just mentioning me to either. Shannon. I was like, we've been good for know. both of you. Glad to be picking up the slack. Um, yeah, add a boy, Mike. Now that uh, you know, when the holidays come, I, I can't guarantee that's going to happen. But we've mm -hmm. just been pretty busy, so I'm running towards uh, the light. Uh, 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 no, not running towards like I, for me. I am as of late working towards. Um, I go, well, maybe we should dress up for Halloween, like trying to go creative ideas, not just for me, but for other people and other shows. So I've been on Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace. You're talking is, the history. This is what is, you were. Yes. Doing. It's so sophisticated right now. Yeah. Compared to what Craigslist was. Mm -hmm. Craigslist was the, I think, the epicenter of um, being, uh, what, uh, what is it, catfished. Yeah. Because you didn't know or what was going to. Or a serial killer. Well, you didn't know it was going to show up. You didn't know what type of item was going to show up. You right. didn't know if the picture was going to show up because we didn't have video kids. For you kids listening right now, you didn't have video to justify what you're about to see. If you're on right. Facebook Marketplace, they have video of what they're, they're selling. They're walking around with it. They have somebody holding it up. It's basically like a poor man's QVC for your neighborhood. Yeah, didn't Craigslist sort of start out as like a missed connections dating thing? Yeah, was, that uh, is me. Hooking up. Hey, look, this there is, he is me in the suit right here. There it is. Yes. You put your legs down and uh, and it, and it moves robotically. Yes. The legs that are is... in black, Mike, so you don't see them. Is it's that kind a of hotel like a... lobby of some sort? Yes, because I because I Where said did to you the... have your party because I was on the no I was on the side of an alley putting it on. I said I can't see. Do you mind? And I wasn't going to bring him to my third floor condo. So I had him come to the hotel around the corner, and I said, let's go to that lobby. It's a public place. It's so, so, in, so, it's so sus. The whole thing is so in wrong. In the lobby, I'm putting on this costume, and the concierge is like, are you a guest here, sir? I said, yes, I am. And, I, <laughs> and, and the guys from NASA is telling me how this works. Look at that. Look at I that love thing. 
the fact that his actual legs you can see them in in but they're in black so it looks like a lion king costume from broadway it's um, just did you what, what was the outlay for that what was the actual cost? 250 dollars you rube unbelievable was actually i cardboard? think that's probably a deal yeah i was i was a hit in georgetown i remember that i was still courting shannon and i was in shape and I was walking around in that big costume, and every single doorman was like, "You gotta come in. We got a five hundred dollar costume contest. You gotta come in. We got a thousand dollar costume. You gotta come in here, man. You gotta I come see. in here. That's you gotta why. Come in. That's why yes. the sensitivity about me poo pooing the uh, the costume contest. Yes, that's it. I, but uh, don't you think it takes the fun out of Halloween when it's a targeted person that's just out to hit as many contests as he can? If you are going into the enterprise. Solely for the purpose of, uh, hey, we're going to win, and it's re- if you place too much import on that, right? Okay. You're going, you're going to, you're going to, you're cruising for I a see bruising that. because I see in that. a in a in a costume contest, you know, you get one goofy joke or a hot girl, and that'll bump you right off, no matter your twelve hours of makeup or whatever you yeah. put in there, and people just take it very personally, and I think that is a sign of the. Uh, you know, oh, the if future you lose, dumbing if, of America. Yeah, if you lose, thank you for clarifying. Yeah, if you lose a costume contest, and then you're upset about it. Yes, and then you try to attack the two DJs that you think made that decision. Right. Then that's the dumbing of America. That's the dumbing of America. Especially yeah, if the disc I'm jockeys talking years ago. Yeah, for that. Mike. Especially if the disc jockeys did not want to be there at all. That is the greatest uh, costume that you ever had. And you, I still, I swear this is true. I think of Oscar when I think of Halloween as Super Mario. I do too. I yes, think of yeah. that every single time. I don't think can of I, that one, even though that's the, that's the greatest costume. Can I costume tell you, you why? Why is that? Because Super Mario was the penultimate Halloween to me finding out that at that time, Where's my wife? The Princess Peach, my ex-girlfriend. Yes. Because I was Super Mario. Was dressed in her Princess Peach costume, standing outside our condo, talking to Matt Hardy, because he had been doing the swanton bomb off the top rope (laughs) into her you-know-where for months. Yeah. So that night? So I remember waking up as Mario. God, that was a horrible hell. In my bedroom and hearing out my window and i'm like oh, who is outside no. oh, and i'm on the third so... floor so she and she's on you know and did you overhear anything and i put i put I, you can because uh, you know oh, a conversation carries painful. and she's like i can't always see you in a, the ritz carlton and like i hear ritz carlton and i'm like how's your shoulder doing and like i'm like what is and then i'm like I like I keep dreaming about your submarine in your pants or something, something like now, that. For those of you um, that don't uh, wow. understand yeah. all of Oscar speak, uh, he's yes. discussing a relationship where there was someone that had gone astray that yes. he was very close to, and he discovered it astray. And that, that that well, yeah. I mean, she started an OnlyFans and then uh, you know brought in her 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 co-star, uh, this, and and they started. That had you know, to be. I mean, that had to be horrible at the time, Mike. Mm-hmm. It was painful. painful. Looking back now, it's the best, best thing, thing that, that could ever have happened. ever happened sure, in my life. But because my, we cuckoo, we had cuckoo. That's no, because we hadn't we we hadn't got we we weren't married. Mm-hmm. I hadn't really I think found well I hadn't found financial success, and um, and it was it was a toxic relationship. Now there was never any social activity. Oh, where well, there wasn't chaos. Where there that, wasn't where, chaos. Where that particular individual, oh my God. and I'm talking about my own home, where it wasn't a, a goat F. Yes. And offensive to me and yeah. my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time. Your current and wife. At my, <laughs> Stop I, it. You, you weren't around for any of the others. Uh, the, but the thing was, it was the, this person was rude. Period. Yeah, but but Mike, End I don't want I don't want to focus on the person. Okay, I just want to focus on. Well, she's ultimately really rude on, to you on on the Halloween. Mike okay. the rude. Right. So that's why you think of me, Sad Mario. Do I really? Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Sad because Mario. it was because I remember there with my mustache half off, looking out the window. Is that when all seeing, the crap happened that night? Yes. 
Oh, okay. That, is that like, like like when you came back? Were we doing the podcast at that the point? next morning? And you came in, and that's when he's eating ice cream on the yeah, yeah. Jamo yeah. and fudge, right? Yeah. I didn't realize yeah. that. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that, Oscar. Yeah, yeah. You look at look at the way life happens for a reason, pal. That's the look, way it look happens. at all this, and yeah. I've got the 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 best the best and sweetest uh, wife in town. She's a delight. She's, She's an a delight. delight. Now, can like any other spouse, I'm sure she feels the same way as me about me. We can all be pains in our asses once in a while, yeah, but yeah. But she's on your team, yeah. But she's definitely Team Oscar, uh, and and funny, and and yeah. and nice, and yeah. kind, and she'd polite. also have the common sense of walking away from the building if she was. And she, like, she were to wrestling. cheat on you, she'd do it better. Oh yeah, I wouldn't know. It'd well, be, you know I'd, what that I'd find out me. from a lawyer. What that tells me is that you know that was probably a regular occurrence. No matter who that person was with. Yeah, and I can't. I don't want to focus on the person that was over a decade ago. I know. And I wish them the best. Yeah, but I still make an occasional comment about my uh, my days. Yeah, yeah cause, because you don't let things go. Um, what I want to focus on is wow, the future. What a nice compliment that is. <laughs> well, Mike, I think what's happening what a nice here compliment that is. is we're letting Oscar make it all about him. Yes, thank you. So that's fine. I feel great today. <laughs> I Speaking of, Mike, can I speak of your lovely wife? Sure. I would love to uh, consult her because I've started getting in, and I don't know if her line of tights is for also for men. Zaya, uh, yeah, they do have um, they do have men's uh, menswear like that. Hey, Oscar, do. can you can you Zaya. do that pose again one yeah. more time? Because, ladies and gentlemen, this is the worst OnlyFans you've ever seen. Are you post? Uh, did you do some kind of workout or therapy this morning? No, I worked out downstairs at the gym before. Okay, yeah, you look here. So there yeah. is a line of her. You can go to dermglowskin dot com, and she sells uh, that as well. And Active another big wear. thing, we're 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 ready to go with it. We're just gonna wait Men's for the right time. Where and it's women's be very very wear. Yes. super excited about uh, her next endeavor, which I think is going to be great. And I'm already a client of that. So that's uh, I'll tell you about that uh, later on. But back to Halloween. Yeah, I have to really ap- <laughs> apologize. Why? To uh, the text thread when oh, Oscar, it was, I thought uh, I found Oscar it a quite bit innocently severe. put up a picture of his dog with a bowl of candy in front of him, and then, uh, well, let me read. He it. was dressed as Mike. The dog was dressed as a dragon. How do you not love that? There Oscar it is. Sends there out, it is, Mike. There it is. There it is. Sends out that picture, a group text, and uh, and it, you know everybody's responding. All the men in our group say one of them says. Uh, sweet boy. The next person says, "What a good doggy!" And uh, <laughs> Oscar's got the bat. And I, <laughs> fueled by perhaps uh, something from Mister a man named Tito, ah, Michael course. writes. Uh, Mister Sensitive says, "Jesus, boys, grow some testicles." <laughs> Happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Nice. He, he, he didn't even say happy Halloween after he said, no, Jesus, boys, grow no. some testicles. And Oscar Rob, went Rob happy like Halloween. in a nanosecond writes back, much too late for that. That was funny. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be happy to know that me and my other older dad buddy yes. were, were laughing. And uh, the, the older dad, who I commiserate with, and right. he's my hero because he is, uh, you know, he's a little older than I am and he's got the kids the same age and he's a, an enormously successful gentleman in two okay. different fields. And he's funny because he, at this stage of his life, he likes creature comforts and he does what he wants to do and he loves his boys and he's a, a good friend, and he's got just a magnificent home, and we love socializing with them. And our wives get along very well. But, like, he – there are things uh, – what was – it's so funny. There's so many things he said that made me laugh out loud last night. And I think we're, we decided that the two younger brides and the children would venture out, and at his suggestion – I believe the term was, we'll catch up with you. <laughs> um, and so they, and, and we were going to do uh, what we did last year, which was hop into his massive SUV and follow, <laughs> follow along. Just like funny. a Secret Service detail and on it, the yes, uh, inaugural exactly. parade. Yeah. Exactly. And by yeah. the way, not alone, cars, 
golf carts, everything. There are yeah. a lot of vehicles that are uh, tracking with this and, uh, and venturing out. And we're following along. And I think that I'm not sure whether I've got the quote exactly right, but uh, I think it was something as we were crawling into the SUV, uh, leaving my living room, uh, I think the comment was, I hate Halloween. Uh, and it was just, it was funny. It, it was really, really, really funny. And uh, this is a true story. We're coming up at the end of our street, which uh, there are two separate segments of our neighborhood, three, four, mm-hmm. actually. Okay. But there's, there's Casket Acres, the street that I live on, where, where uh, it, resembled a, it resembled London in the 1940s oh, when people would black out their windows uh, to prevent the Germans from bombing. That is how dark these houses are. These di- I, I think if there's, if there's electrician's tape they could have put over their windows to watch television th- to make sure that no youngsters come up to their door, uh, they did. We're talking buttoned up, cars in the driveway, right? but buttoned up, dark, you know, uh, everything saying keep your little crumb crunchers away. You and know, the yeah. one person that I think took it to the next level was my wife. Uh, last night at about oh, 4.30. Oh, you didn't do any Halloween? Nothing. At all? And uh, about 4.30, she said, close all the shades and make sure all the lights are off. And I, and I did this. Let me say and, on behalf of all the children in your neighborhood, thank you, Rob. You're welcome. And then I walked over and she was locking our front door. I said, do you think they're going to like barge in? And demand a Snickers bar? She says, better safe than sorry. <laughs> so we turned all the lights off and uh, repaired to the room. Well, the that's back. your bonding. You two bonded with your with mutual your yeah. selfishness Distinct. and hate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's good. I've that's done it in good. the past. I just, rem- you know, I, I don't. You also, you know, in fairness, n- not that um, not that we need to belabor this, but she just had COVID. It's true. It's true. It's right? her first day out today. That doesn't yeah. matter. Up and out. <laughs> just kidding. Well, what happened is we we discussed either not giving out Boosted. candy or giving out Reese's pieces that she'd licked. Boost it. No. You got your boost yesterday? How do you feel today? Perfect. was giving me a hard time about it the other day. Boost it. Yeah. 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 Boosted. <laughs> um, so it's- Drugstore uh, boosted? Yeah. Did you get to go I went to the, the one that's on strike. I went down to the uh, greens. Did you get to go to the flimsy little cardboard booth? I went to, uh, now I go to the grocery store. Remember when I had the fallout with the pharmacist there? That's right. And yes. I went to the grocery store, but I still go there to get vaxxed. And it was, I was happy to see there was one person in line in front of me, and there was a 30-minute discussion as two people at the, re- the, 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 the tell in one of those stores, you have two people at the register sitting there going, tick, 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 yeah. tick, 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 click, click, click. You've got the, uh, the older, wizened, miserable employee and the intellectually, uh, how should I put this in a nice way? Uh, perhaps uh, she's not going to be a finalist on Jeopardy. Understood. That's all I'll say. Okay. And and that just goes on. And on. But I'm of the mindset. I said, deal, deal. It's going to be fine. Right. Got my. Uh, but it was a little scary when I thought because I did all the paperwork and I did all the speaking to the wizened one who had a bad attitude but looked competent. Mm. And then when I walked into the cubicle, it's the Jeopardy finalist. Of course. God. And I'm like, God, you're going to put a needle in my arm. That just uh, yeah, weirded me out a little. But I get myself injections, so that's all right. Do you ever do uh, spontaneous happy talk with your injector to sort of lighten the mood? If the person, if I feel as though the person uh, is engageable in this particular uh, instance, I think I asked for a name and said, how are you doing today? And that was it. Wrapped it up after that. When I deal with an older, wizened pharmacist, and they're at every place. This wasn't a pharmacist, by the way. These both were employees, not, oh, not the okay. lab coat people. Because when I meet with a, an older, wizened, miserable pharmacist, and you do see them, I always say, you know, you were only a few classes away from being a doctor. You should have tried That's a little pretty. harder. And then they, yeah. they jam the, also, the also needle into your muscle. Not accurate. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's, it's not. Depends, it depends it's on your definition of few. Right, few could be a hundred. I mean, you have to study for yeah, it's like eight more years. That's a few, few years. So you 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 saying the amount of time commitment is uh, equal depending to? what type of doctor you want to be. Okay. How about a chiropractor? That's not a real doctor, is it? 
No, I think I, I'm. I'm I, I, pharmacist Are you is saying what, four that the, years? That the uh, well, pharmacist how long is does it four take years, to become right? a pharmacist? pharmacist. Four years, I think. Four years, probably. Yeah. yeah. So then, if you got another, if you got medical school, that's another four. So and you do a specialty, maybe another residency. Two to, yeah, two to six. So eight years. So it's eight actually you've been you've been wrong all these years. Well, I withdraw the insult. Uh, <laughs> he's so still back miserable. To <laughs> we uh, we follow. And then, um, do they walk or do they hop in? Then they hop in at the end of our street, where they, okay. where, where unusually towards the end of the street, apparently they found candy gold because uh, not only my friend Mitch, but a couple of other people were handing out stuff. So that was cool. And then we move over to just the absolute epicenter of Halloween in my neighborhood, where uh, the yards were. Decorated with giant skeletons, and people had people had beautiful Halloween, and I'm all in on that. I mm-hmm. love that. If you're going to take the time and effort to do that, I'm going to appreciate it, and I'm going to say fantastic. And the best was a brand new one where the people had a smoke machine, cool. and there was a band. Okay, I love I, that. I do ghoul, like a fog machine. I love that. A ghoul band of yeah. giant. Statues playing instru- Oh, it was in- amazing. We we ordered from Home Depot a Jack Skellington that was like the cartoon size Home Depot Skellington, oh, like an eight nine foot one. I've seen it online. Yes, yeah. and Very Home cool. Depot called and said, "How are you going to get it up your elevator?" Because they saw the address, the business addresses for an ESPN set. Because it doesn't come in chunks. It does, and they said, "I said, oh, you guys can just bring it up to the fourth floor." And they're like, oh no, it's just curbside curbside drop off. <laughs> curbside oh. skeleton drop off. Uh, thank you, box like, store. Uh, no, you, keep your four hundred dollars. We're okay. <laughs> We're mm-hmm. fine. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, people that go all out. Yes, I it, love it's, that. Yeah. It's but storage, you know what's sad? It's, it's so sad. What? During the day, a lot of them they're like inflatables of huge pumpkins and skeletons and stuff. And during the day, they deflate them. So it just yeah. looks like a pile of rags yeah. on the Rob, yeah, I think that's impressive. changed a lot. Has it? Well, I've got infla- I've got some inflatables in my yeah. neighborhood. Well, g- I think you you have a trashy neighborhood. Um, I, you I think like the, my neighborhood. It was very nice, and then I realized how far away it was, and I said, like, "Oh my god!" That doesn't make it trash. That's it just next makes to West it, Virginia. Yeah, um, where you went to school. Yes, and I'm not necessarily happy about those choices. I'm not so. happy about <laughs> Robert's choices. <laughs> we we. Um, the the level of crafts, craftsmanship for the skeletons, the tombstones, the zombies, everything that's out there now has changed from when we used to decorate my mom's house. Okay. And we used to decorate uh, the townhouse when I was a kid, when we used to uh, decorate um, anything. Because I think the cost, especially with the advent of 3D printing, has come down. Okay, so more okay. people can do it. Good. Yes. Good. Yes. Did I'm either glad of you to hear that? Did either of you carve jack o' lanterns? I didn't even carve a pumpkin this year. Oh. There was a jack o' lantern carving contest in this building. In the in your for the for, the for all the security all, all all this no in the build the three building complex called the row all of the security guards and the people that were here we went downstairs and they said yeah we sent you guys an email and I'm like. Oh, I didn't see that. And I looked at my email, and there it was. Um, and that was on me because I could afford it to all our employees. Let me, let me ask a question about that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. How uh, – I'm just confused. These yeah. are these are businesses. Yes. And and they, they wanted to have a pumpkin carving contest for the business owners and the employees? For the employees, that? yeah. To bring, to bring some sort of, like, normalcy to the – The empty buildings? The empty buildings. Yeah. Yes. Like, yeah. If you get enough wow. pumpkins, they look like tenants. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Put them in the windows. They look like disgruntled employees staring out the window. Or happy employees. It depends well, on how you oh, carve yeah, it them. Oh, yeah. could be like, hey, hey, look, that boy, he looks like he's happy working on that eighth floor Hi. with with, <laughs> with only one tooth. Um, when I was in, When I was in, in the gym this morning, uh, and I was like, man, captains of industry go to the gym at 5 a.m. I show up at 6.30. I'm like, I wonder who's there from the building. And I have to tell you, there was three, a, a little, uh, a little more mature than I am, white guys working out, getting it and done. Then, wow. And then two ladies walked in around eight, and I said, "All right, these are the people that are going to start talking to each other and doing business with mm-hmm. each other." Always on, no off switch for this guy. No off switch for this guy. 
Reminds me of my wife a little bit. Just constantly hustling and getting her done. And 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 trying to siphon from people as much as he po- as much knowledge and business connections as he possibly can, even if he's on a treadmill or a stairmaster or or an elliptical, it doesn't matter. He is sucking whatever he can find anywhere out of his brain. It can happen in a convenience store. It can happen in it can happen in a um, a gym. It can happen on the street. Mike, in a convenience store, he's more likely to buy taquitos and lottery tickets. I've seen that. And then have an altercation with a homeless man. Exactly. But at the gym, he can close a deal. But I will tell you, um, I had a fantastic time. I had a great time last night, and I feel good today. Uh, And it was uh, was happy, happy, joy, joy as we're winding down. Uh, I think the mother of my friends, uh, uh, the mother that was there, the other mom Mm -hmm. of the twins, I may have made her or, uh, hurt her feelings when at the end I said, well, we don't have many more of these left. And she kind of looked at me like, what do you mean? I'm like, uh, they're 10. I'm thinking 12 is the maybe two more years if we're lucky. That's when they wind but, it down. But there were there were older kids in the neighborhood. I was going to say, doesn't she have an older husband? Because that could have. She does. That could have been misinterpreted when you say is, there are not many more of these left. He is hysterically funny. He great, really, great. really is. And he's just, you know. He he approach he works hard and he's worked hard. I think he's on his second very successful enterprise, and he is just a delight to be around. And we laugh most of the time. We just laugh because he mm-hmm. makes me laugh so much. With a all right, you guys go have a great time. We'll catch up, and then he gives me this like little grin, which is just funny. And uh, and and so we get over there, and when we're in the nice section, uh, more expensive homes. Better decorated yards, more families, more children, and it absolutely rocked. And I am st- – you never know when it's going to happen, right? You never know when it's going to happen. I'm talking to the lady that had the band out in front, mother of small children, very nice. Got my buddy a white claw out of uh, out of her home, came very out. Very sweet. And – I'm talking about the band. I said, I love people that go all out. We didn't see you here last year, so we didn't do it last year. And then she's talking to the neighbor across the street. And the neighbor, I said, where are you from? Uh, We're from Atlanta, but we spent most of our time in uh, Virginia. I said, I used to work in that. What part? She says, Herndon. I Ooh, said, I, look I out. And, we, and we start a whole thing. She said, well, how long were you up there? I said, 20 years. What did you do? I was in radio. Radio? Like on the radio? I said, yeah, I, I did a show called The Don and Mike Show. And she said, no, no, my husband, baby. I'm, I'm like that. And there, yes. I found a fan, and, and there he was. Yes. He'd already gone in to watch the World Series. I said, he's, oh, he's the, the one. Guy. Yeah. You're the one. <laughs> he's the one. So it was, uh, and, and then a few more houses. They were all loaded with their candy. Back home, see you later. Uh, fine, fine. I, Do they I look had... happier in Florida than they were in Herndon? Um, <laughs> yes, yeah. You can't not be. It was yeah. Herndon, and then uh, oh. the the new younger ugly stepsister of Herndon, Ashburn. <laughs> no, Ashburn. No, Ash, she's you. the hotter one. She's yeah. the hotter one yes. in a cold way because the industry. <laughs> In Ashburn, and I know about Ashburn because my mother-in-law lived in Ashburn. Yes. The industry, correct me if I'm wrong, Rob Spiewak, in yes. Ashburn is the uh, aesthetically pleasing data storage. That's it. Yeah. Oh, which yeah. is That's data storage. Trillion as, dollar business. As yeah. far as the eye can see. And mm-hmm. l- let me say, nothing looks more like old colonial Williamsburg <laughs> than fields of concrete data storage facilities. Yeah, across the street Jesus. from uh, houses with pillars. You it's know, it's, it's a great mix. I lived there for a while. Leck. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyhow, it was uh, really uh, a good time. And even at the end of the night, I add half of my uh, Tito's and soda and poured it out into the sink. I said, that's enough. That's enough for the evening. Uh, fine, oh, fine, Oh, you're fine. being responsible. I thought you were totally. pouring it out for, no, for those we've I lost. I am no longer not. I think that, what did he say? What did he say? I missed he it. He was damn pouring it. it out. You were pouring it out for those we've lost. It's a rapper thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, for my homies. I uh, <laughs> Listen, I will tell you that it was uh, the timing was great. I ended up uh, not looking forward to it, but then uh, once everybody got there, I had a perfectly good time. My kid was happy. 
He uh, he got a good night's sleep. Everything was so he uh, finished stronger okay. than he started yesterday. He finished much stronger, and then he was okay. Okay, this morning. Okay, well, a little that's... freaked out about the 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 homework that was not done Ooh. in advance of the Halloween, but got it done. Mm-hmm. But it's just uh, you know so. This older friend Halloween. that makes you laugh so much. Yeah. Um, how often do you socialize with him outside of like Halloween? Uh, uh, well, we last uh, two weeks ago, probably, but we hadn't done it in two or three months. It the sounds summer. to we me didn't. like this is one you need to pursue. It, it, it's just fun. It's just fun. If they're he's in a, a guy that makes you code. laugh, if that's you know a... what I mean, they're in a different zip code. And so it's not always, you know, they're much more social than we are. We don't yeah. do it that much. Well, you know? Get yourself to it. I no, mean, Mike doesn't. He gets pursued. Well, Mike doesn't pursue. That policy it, well, hasn't he, worked do well. these people, so it works really well. well we just happy. hang. We hang, and no, they've got uh, and the doesn't. laughter. But here, you know what the real common bond is? What? Is the older dad thing. That's yeah. the real thing. What was he yeah. saying under his breath again? The young wives know. thing also. That's not the connection. No. The connection is really the older dads thing. Mm. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, and I, I it's, it's just a, it's a fun experience. Who is the older dad of you two? Uh, he is okay. Yeah, I All mentioned right. that uh, before, but um, it's it, it was it was fine. And for the people that go all out and have the stuff in their yard for the kids, uh, as I said yesterday, Rob, I wish more people would do it. You know, yeah. maybe I next wish year. more people weren't selfish like you. Well, you know, and and would at least uh, put a light on and come to the door. You know, I mean, it's just like you know, oh, my children are gro- are grown, so that's it. Pack it up, hang up the shingle. And all that. What if I did a jack o' lantern and lights, and when they op- they knocked or rang my doorbell, I came to the door and just said, "I'm very sorry," and then sent them on their way? Would Why that be such selfish? Cruelty. You were you were a oh joyous Halloween God. participant. That's so three years dark ago. Three and years ago, it ruined it for me. It ruined it for me. When your kids left? No, 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 no. When I was sitting outside by myself in the cold with a skeleton and no one was coming. That yeah, was but, but you got to bounce back. Put on a heavier coat. Uh, it, do you have a buddy in the neighborhood? Is there anybody? I, no, I know no. what it is. You know what it is? It's the hooch. Factor. Sober. Well, there is part that's of that, you know? Yeah, that's it. Changes well, are sitting, made. Changes yeah, sitting are made. there not drinking well, I used, changes remember, the entire experience. I used to hand out beers to yeah. parents. Yeah, okay. All right. You know what? I think we have to we yeah. have to respect yeah. that, Oscar. Uh, you know, you know. If you want to be a shut in, be a shut in. No, you know what? I'm not going Just... to be cruel to him. I'm going to say I support you in your decision. And yeah, I do it. Support you in your sobriety. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And you know, shut in is not that bad. They even have a, a mask just for us. <laughs> On that note, we're going to take a break. <laughs> mask for shut in. It's great. Sunday morning at 7 a.m. I still stand and kneel. On NBC4. <laughs> My mom, God rest her soul. She, she did a few of those towards the end. Oh, uh, sorry. We'll be right back with the round table. I'm on. Hey, let's talk about chime, shall we? Uh, credit scores might not seem like a big deal, but uh, low or no credit can jam up your financial dreams. That's where Chime sweeps in with its second credit builder visa credit card. I'm sorry, secured. I keep saying second. It's secured, Michael. <laughs> Let me rewind that for a second, and I'll Please. start right back up again. That's where Chime sweeps in with its secured credit builder visa credit card. Millions trust it to power up their credit scores, safely boost your score with everyday buys and prompt payments. No annual fees, no credit check to begin. Plus, no minimum about minimum for balance. Halloween. Or overdraft fees. Halloween. Level up your credit. <laughs> Let me start again. I'm sorry. It's chime time. It is chime time. Halloween time is chime time. And Mike making a face like Jack Elam. Hi, all right, let me uh, let me just see. Oh, there we are. Oh, now that you've cleaned your glasses, this oh, will go you. well. Thank you very it much. It was the copy. No annual fees. And uh, I need music. No annual fee. We're going to have to fix that. Okay, no annual know. fees and no credit check to begin. Plus, no minimum balance or overdraft fees. Level up your credit game with Chime. Seize your financial future. Start building up your credit right now. Good time to do it.
Open a Chime checking account with at least a $200 qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash TMOS. That's Chime.com slash TMOS. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank NA, member FDIC. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. On time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may cause a negative impact on your credit score. Results may vary. Let's release that Kraken. Look, he has, a, he has a jack-o'-lantern. Ah, very exciting. Very, very exciting. Uh, welcome to the post-Halloween version of the roundtable today. President Biden. Oh, where's my boom? Come on, damn it. Will you get your act together? I apologize to all our listeners that want a more professional broadcast from me. Hit it, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, President Biden signed an executive order yesterday on artificial intelligence ai to uh stop it from taking over the world and uh sending unkillable cyborg back uh cyborgs back to our time to assassinate the mothers of future resistance leaders uh but that his, sounds uh, good <laughs> his inspiration was not the terminator it was the new mission impossible movie dead reckoning part one biden recently watched the movie which uh, that's where an AI program called The Entity gains sentience and goes rogue, creating havoc for Tom Cruise and his team, too. Mm. Biden's uh, chief, st chief of staff, Bruce Reed, says, quote, if he hadn't already been concerned about what could go wrong with AI before that, he saw plenty more to worry about. How about yeah. that? Making policy based yeah, on His Tom staffers Cruise are preventing story. him from watching The New Exorcist because they don't know what that'll do. Hey. Oh, look at the demons. <laughs> oh, all your demons are out here. Come on. Hey, folks. <laughs> folks, my dad used to say if there's a demon in the basement, there's a witch in the in the attic. Uh, Biden was already concerned, Reed says, Mike. quote, he saw fake AI images of himself, uh, of his dog, and he saw how it can make bad poetry. Not sure what that means. Did the AI uh, dog not bite Secret Service people? I said, "Come on, Commander. What's it? What's his dog's name like?" I think it, it is Commander. Yeah. Commander or Commander or you know, attack. it's Commander. Yeah. Come on, attack, Commander. Hey, hey, look, look, look at this. Come here, uh, First Lady. Uh, come here. She, the dog's talking. Hey, uh, Mister President. Yes, Rob. Have you seen the Barbie movie? Oh, Barbie, Margot Robbie. <laughs> She's a ten, even when you're eighty. What are you going to make any policy changes based on the Barbie movie? Absolutely, going to make sure that. Every child, uh, regardless of um, uh, you know neighborhood or socioeconomic status, every ch every one of those children has a uh, has a doll, plastic doll. At a boy, Mr. President. Well done. Th thank you. And I'll make. It. How about uh, everyone gets a, 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 a two, two dolls? That man is a great American hero. How dare you? I hate. Hey, this I is a every tribute. president, regardless of party, Oscar. Yeah, that's, that's true. Run. That's true. Hey, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> It's a work in progress. This is the second this week that I've been doing that. By the way, f you to all the people saying that my that my Richard Dreyfus sounded like Gordon Liddy. And that you know, Paul Morris, you write a lot of crap about me, and uh, you're a, I know you're a big fan of the show, but that hurt my feelings. What they need to do, Mike, they need to watch the movie. They need to put themselves in a chair and watch the Goodbye Girl, and then yes. they will know how good your Dreyfus is. The offending squalus. Had a jack o' lantern in the yard. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, uh, he he uh, Biden has also seen and heard the incredible and terrifying technology of uh, vo voice voice cloning. He's also they, scared of uh, President Biden. Also scared of a toaster because the bread goes please. in uncooked and it look comes out fully cooked. It's amazing. Wait. Look at the crust on that thing. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Was Goodbye Girl a prequel to Gone Girl? No, not at all. No, no. Come no. on, that's a different film. That's Ben Affleck. I'm talking about Marsha Mason, Richard Dreyfus, And Mike and Quinn Cummings. Quinn Cummings, a Goodbye Girl. <laughs> Years ago, great film. Uh, anyway, voice cloning can take three seconds. Your voice turn into an entire fake conversation. <laughs> what the hell is that about? You know, we make a stronger... Stronger AI, better regulation for people. Make sure people get a get a, get get to make make sure that it can't be used for the ferry for the ferry for, for bad reasons. Mr. President, is it true you get most of your news from the television program, The Morning Show? Morning Show, yeah. 
I'll tell you something. I don't. I don't need to waste my time on all these pundits when I can watch uh, get what I need from 30, 30 seconds of Jennifer Aniston <laughs> or every, Bradley Jackson. Every, every Bradley Jackson. <laughs> Alex, Alex Levy. Alex Levy. <laughs> <laughs> Bradley Jackson, Alex. Bradley Jackson, Alex Levy. All I need to know. APN, UPN. <laughs> UPN, yes. Nineteen-year-old uh, Sammy Sheen. Don't know if uh, Mac. If you can find her during this uh, news story, it's pretty quick. I won't mm-hmm. hate you if you if you don't. But Sammy Sheen is the daughter of uh, Charlie Sheen and Denise Williams, and uh, she is planning at the age of nineteen to get breast implants. Uh, while most of us uh, see it as karma. Uh, for her dad, uh, and can get a good chuckle out of it. One person's not amused, and that, of course, is Denise Richards. She right. is against it uh, because she got hers done at uh, that early age, and it's one of her biggest regrets. Uh, she says, quote, I'm trying her out uh, to talk her out of it because uh, – let me let me say this again. The, the I'm trying to talk her out of it, and the reason why – I'm getting them out is that I didn't know how toxic they would be. Mm. Is that and, Sammy uh, Sheen now, in that, that No, picture? that's Denise Richards. I was going to say, Denise that's Richards. Denise Richards, Sammy right? Sheen is an OnlyFans model, and uh, <laughs> let's oh, go Mac, to his be whole careful, screen. Yeah. Uh, just be careful. And it's not an easy surgery. And uh, yeah, I get it. I, uh, but I also yeah. understand when you're out there in this day and age in the economy, tough economy, making, uh, making your way. The, the oh, let can. me just uh, let me think about this real quick. Uh, Please, I am uh, the the what is it? The scion of Denise Richards and yes, the spawn uh, Charlie and Charlie Sheen and I. You know, it's not like there isn't already like this uh, n- n- nepo baby in place, but you also have a path to stardom. Yeah, you could go OnlyFans and probably make a ton of money, and we don't. I mean, who who are we to question how you make your money? I don't We're, question. We, we do what we do. Day and age. That's a but, very young picture of her, by the way. I think she's yes. fully blonde now. Mac, you pervert. I um, I'm trying to find something. That's, that's okay, buddy. You're doing yeah. great. You're doing great. Yeah. No problem. How about one when she looks less like a little girl? Um, well, that's <laughs> not what he likes. <laughs> so true. This is so awkward. With this discussion right now. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the selection of the photo makes us... Yeah, that looks like Julia Jellybean. Hey, hey, hey. I'm troubled by the fact that her name sounds like a 1930s vaudeville comic. Sammy Sheen! Sammy Sheen, all right. (laughs) Right after the Zigfield girls, we're going to get Sammy Sheen. Hey, stop putting them down. Stop putting them down. I I enjoy the Zigfield follies. Did you like vaudeville? I love vaudeville. (laughs) It's George and Gracie. Come on. (laughs) Um... Anyway, never mind. No, I'm sorry. I interrupted. It's fine. Uh, the Rolling Stones are the first act to have Billboard 200 top 10 albums in each decade since the 1960s. Wow. Mm. Their latest album, Hackney Diamonds, debuted at number three. They had 13 top 10 albums in the 60s, 12 in the 70s, six in the 80s. Three in the 90s, two in the 2000s, one in the 2010s, and so far, one in the 2020s. That's pretty cool stuff. That is cool. And you know what? I (laughs) really like. uh, He's adjusting his. uh, I think he's adjusting his set design. (laughs) I don't know why that makes me laugh, but it does. Uh, Uh, I like the cuts that I've heard from it. It sounds great. And I I was ready to dislike it because they're just down to the three. You played a couple. I think I've liked them both, too. Yeah. Uh, They also have the most top 10 albums of all time with 38. Barbara Streisand follows closely behind with 34. And the Beatles and Frank Sinatra have 32 each. So, yeah, I will uh, buy Hackney Diamonds that. in the near future. Uh, I, I don't know. I'll probably get it on vinyl, and I'll let you know what I think of the whole All thing right. through. I didn't the mean, first I, single I, is good. I didn't want to do this because we can't do it on the regular show because of uh, rights and that type of stuff. But yes. there is an artist floating around out there that I discovered just the other day. I think his name is Corey Wong, and he's a guitar player, and he mm-hmm. has a horn section. And it's so it, it's so cool to me because it's my kind of stuff, you know, that kind of... Uh, Horns. Peter Frampton. Uh, well, no. Hey, come on. What's wrong with Frampton Comes Alive? Do what <laughs> yeah. you do. Is that still you know, your favorite uh, show album, me the Mr. Way. President? Yeah. Oh, Doobie I Wah. I like, uh, I like all those great artists. Uh, uh, Peter Frampton, Bob Seger, you know, down on Main Street. Come on. Bob Seger. Uh, Bob Seger. <laughs> you, you could have him to the inauguration. <laughs> I'll be working on this so we can have more conversations with old Joe. <laughs>
I don't know, like my dad said, you know, uh, <laughs> he said one of the crew had to go with one of the guests. Uh, Skinner. How about that? <laughs> um, here's some advice your kids can get on board with. An actual dentist has just said that if you want to protect your teeth, it's best to eat all of your Halloween candy in one sitting. There's some good advice. Mm, that is yeah. good advice. Just yeah. suck it all down and then and I'll vomit. Do anything Fantastic. For food. I can <laughs> eat two dozen eggs. I love this guy. Uh, the, do- the dentist's okay, name is Dr. Olivia Mason. She runs a place near Wheeling, West Virginia called Almost Heaven Family Dentistry. Isn't hey, that, that makes sense because of the song. Uh, she gave the unexpected advice in an interview uh, with her local news. Technically speaking, she said, eating all your candy at once is better for your teeth than having a few pieces a day. Yeah, okay, I get it. If you eat it all at once, you're not decaying your teeth week after mm-hmm. week after week. Yeah, you'll uh, have a beautiful smile said, when you see your, your diabetes doctor. But she said, come on, there's a trade-off. You get a, you get a tummy <laughs> ache. Come on. What you What's about? your favorite candy, Mr. President? Uh, my, my favorite candy is rock candy. <laughs> just regular, just boiled regular. down sugar? I yeah, thought actually. last year you switched to Ovaltine. No, I like maple syrup. <laughs> just just like that? that? Back in the... Uh, back it's in the, softer. Back in the uh, the cooking house. <laughs> I did get a big Delaware <laughs> maple syrup. No. Come on. What are you talking about? I remember my, my old man once said, have maple syrup in the basement, you're going to have hard candy in the attic. <laughs> I remember when he said that. Thanks. Come on. Come on. Uh, all right, now it's uh, our final story. I don't know what I'm doing today. Why do uh, I feel like Joe Biden isn't as old as we're making out to be? Yes, that's clear. Yes. But also, he would he would have remembered the time before refrigerators were around. Oh, the but ice I'm man. wrong about that. The icebox that. man. Yeah. 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 16 flights of stairs with, uh, with the ice tongs. He'd come. There's a guy. There's a guy that understood what the meaning of hard work was. Did you have to you refrigerate your maple syrup, Mr. President? Of course not, for crying out loud. Just put it on top of a block of ice so we got off the pond. <laughs> the pond? A, uh, the Delaware pond. <laughs> the Delaware pond, frozen solid. And that's, uh, you know, that's not a far northern state. No. <laughs> uh, a poll of people asked to choose the best sex uh, they've ever had with a musician. And they oh. ranked these ah. top mm-hmm. ten musicians and uh, and their ability in the boudoir. I have the top ten and the bottom five. What would you okay. like? Uh, what would you like? First? I think well, we should this, start with the top, right? We we didn't even know the story was coming, and we already mentioned a handful of artists. Yeah, we did. Yeah, this yes. is true. Uh, but this is the generic instrument they play. This is what this oh, is based okay. on. Oh, got it. Got it. Not Thank the you. particular oh, thing. Okay. This is got the musician. Thank you. And what they choose to play, mm. and they rank them as lovers. Okay. And Ooh. I think it's men and women, to be right. honest with you. I don't think Great. it's uh, perfect. Uh, so we have at the number best 10, first. Yeah. The best first. At number 10, clarinet players. 5% say they're the best lovers. Uh, number nine, drummers. I thought they would be higher. They oh, are number my, nine I'm with sorry. 6%. Yeah. Uh, number eight, trumpet players got 7% of the vote. Uh, at number seven, piano players, 9%. You would think with the uh, iron and fingers. But anyway, yes. I digress. Can, both of the hands can do things at different times. Yeah, but they only use them when they get paid. Number six, <laughs> flute players, uh, 10%. I, I would think if you were able to play the flute. Uh, anyway. Uh, Lizzo number five, plays the flute. Number five in the top five of the best lovers, violin players, violinists. Number five. Wow. Passionate. Number four, sax players. They play Baker the sax. Street. Yeah. <laughs> This whole thing, I didn't know it would be Yuck. fraught with innuendo, but it is. Uh, didn't think of it, really. Yeah, I kind of rushed through my show prep today. Let's be Understood. Uh, number three, French horn. That's yeah. great news for Jimmy Buffett. Yeah. Not Jimmy Buffett, I'm sorry. Uh, who am I thinking of as the French horn player? Chuck Mangione. Know. Why did I say Jimmy Buffett? He didn't, say, he didn't play the French horn, you dummy. He played the flugelhorn. Yeah, well. Not the French horn. Yeah, what would you go on stage and playing, uh, you know, Chuck Mangione comes out with a big... Phony French horn. Get did your you act ever, together. Did you ever play an instrument, Mr. President? I was in Kenny G's band. <laughs> that I did not uh, expect. <laughs> number two, guitar. Guitarists, yes, there of they course. are at of number course. two. And uh, the number one uh, musician, instrument played, numero uno lover. What do you think it is? You'll never, ever, ever guess it. Mm, the centaur. Centaur is not correct. Uh, the bass. Is it sitar? It's not sitar. Oh, it's a sitar, sitar, yeah. I thought it was full of sin. How about uh, the bass, Mike? Bass guitar. No, that is incorrect. Number one, trombone players. 
It's well, Mike, it's very true. It's hard to beat a good tromboner. Yeah, there you go. Uh, oh, here are the yeah. bottom five oboe, cello, <laughs> ukulele, accordion. They're all the non sexy instruments. And at number one, yes. the worst lovers, well, this kind of goes without saying, tuba players. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. no, well, not the tuba player. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, I've always player. been very satisfied every time I've made love to someone. Who played the triangle? You need, don't you need the, the the core strength to carry the tuba? Uh, no. Have you seen some tuba players in those college <laughs> bands? You know. Yeah. There you go. Enough said. Well, we have to take a break. Uh, when we come back, uh, we'll do something else. Thank you. Do. Hey, everybody! Relive and preserve your cherished memories with Legacy Box. Safely digitize your family's precious moments. It's so easy. Visit legacybox.com/tmos for an exclusive forty percent discount. They handle over fifteen types of analog media, including VHS tapes, Super 8 millimeter film reels, and photo negatives. As the world's largest digitizer with a decade of experience, Legacy Box has helped over a million families. Relive special moments from weddings to Christmases to beach trips to school plays and, of course, Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> By the way, if you're wondering, that falls next year on May 5th. You're welcome for the reminder. Thank you. Go to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to save 40%. Buy today. Send it in when you're ready. Go to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS. LegacyBox.com slash TMOS. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. Uh, all right. Oscar has been talking about automobiles and lemon laws. Yes. And uh, it's very – oh, by the way, I, I – uh, I just talked to Sis, my successful sister, who yes. got it, got herself an electric car. Uh, you know, did she all buy the there. car or a picture of the car? I think she bought the company. Uh, Oscar's <laughs> been dealing with uh, with automobiles, and uh, yeah, you yeah, wanted to talk about that. There's um, there's a protocol in my life when um, my father is either coming back into town or leaving town, and um, my father's coming back into town, Papa. Right. Puppy. It's wonderful. Um, that is nice. It's delightful. Yes. Uh, with that comes um, what most would call an advanced team. And that advanced team is me. Okay. Where I have to make sure his car is ready to go. I have to make sure that the service A or B on his Mercedes. Mercedes. My I'm Mercedes. Jack Weston. That the tires are rotated. That uh, the interior has been cleaned. And let me tell you, one day if I buy a kid from some other continent, because I am not fertile, Daddy, I hope I have a son or daughter that also does this for me. Like, I, imagine coming back into town, and I show up in, and they show they show up in my vehicle that's been cleaned and has been uh, detailed and doesn't have any. Like, I just drive is it, it around. Garage kept. When it is garage outcome. kept. It so is. it can't be that messy or dirty or anything, right? It depends on who's looking at it. Ah, and it depends on how many steaks my mom has defrosted on the hood. Well, this is an old story, but yes, yes. this has happened. Um, yeah. So he's he's coming back in T-minus three weeks. So I said, Shannon, I got I to gotta get home this weekend. I got to pick up the Mercedes and then take it into um, the dealership we go to. What year is it again? Well, this the, his his um, his driving Mercedes, uh, not his collectible Mercedes. His driving Mercedes. I didn't know he had two. Well, he's got that old SL two hundred and forty, but not in our garage. Um, okay. All right. That he keeps at a, a friend's a climate controlled garage that's much healthier than him and okay. much uh, wealthier than him. Um, but that has the nothing to do with me. Friend is healthier and wealthier. Yes. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah, because every time I see him, I'm like, that guy doesn't look like he's eighty one. He looks like he's sixty one. Right. Um. The, the Mercedes, the, I think it's a C300, I don't know. I take it in, and um, it's two thousand. It's a 2010. Okay. Like, you know, drivable, great for a second car if yeah. you're just traveling around the world. I, I will take it out sometimes without even asking him, which is great. He doesn't write um, the mileage down like I feel uh, so Ferris guilty. Bueller? Yes. <laughs> I do feel wheel. guilty where I'm like, I hope yeah. nothing happens. Um, so I take it to the dealership, and they're like, oh, like... Does your dad want to sell the car? And I said, oh, I'll ask him. This happens every single time. Oh, wow. And then. Um, <laughs> you like doing a deal. Yeah, I'm like, oh, all right. And so we go back and forth and I call my father. I'm like, hey, they're like, he goes, uh, 
there's uh, a convertible that I'm seeing online that maybe my dad's 81. What is he going to do with a convertible? Well, he doesn't have much hair to get messed up. That is true. And he's bald. Um, so last car. So then uh, stop it. And he says, uh, my mom used to say that all the time. This is my, yeah, this, this will be my last car. Yeah. He goes, this, this, this will be my last car. My mom and then, said that too. <laughs> and then exactly. he says, and then when I'm done with it and I'm waiting for like, it could be yours to me. Right. Mm-hmm. He goes, I can leave it for Sebastian. Sebastian's yeah. six years old. He's six years old. Nothing I'm like 45. Right. I'm your son. Mm-hmm. I'm the one that's taking care of mommy while yeah. you're gone living your second life. Like, what about me? Okay. Didn't even bring that up because I'm used to the therapist told me, don't worry about it. He doesn't care. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I said, oh, yeah, Sebastian will love a convertible pop. Um, so so I, I, go, I call my guy and I'm like, hey, um, that convertible looks really cool. My, my dad's actually interested. Like, what can you do for this C300 or whatever it is? And he goes, yeah, we'll, we'll trade this in. You guys have been, uh, you know, customers for life, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, well, let me see the car facts in that thing. And so he sends it over. And he's like, hey, just a heads up. This has been a retitled. <laughs> it was oh, no. technically under a lemon law. Oh, but we no, no. <laughs> Are you looking at it because it's got such a great price on it? Yeah, well, my dad's looking at it because it's got such a great price okay. on it. Okay. Right? Okay, yeah. yeah. Retitled. Yes. That's very suspicious. Well, he, he told me, he goes, that, this is a pretty peculiar car, but, and I'll tell you why. And he's not selling me on it. There's another car that might the same model that's f- almost fifty thousand dollars more expensive. <laughs> I guess like he's like I I goes if I were you like maybe not this car for your dad maybe this car for your dad and I'm like that's fifty thousand dollars more car expensive. That, that you're that's so then at. so he goes let me call you back in twenty minutes okay. I'm gonna find out because you know we're what? on the, the same page the we are on the same is, page Mike the salesman is such a good guy as Larry yeah. King would say sure, that he recommends guy. the car. That's fifty thousand dollars more. Yeah, what a what a generous thing. So he gets back to you. He gets back to me. This is why it's so top of mind. And he says, you know, we can't really pinpoint because it came from Georgia. This car, why it was a lemon, but reti- and retitled. But we've done the inspection. It seems to be okay, but we can't certify it. You understand? We can't certify it. And Absolutely. I'm like, Absolutely. And yeah. then so then I call my when dad. You were looking at that yellow car. That had been uh, you oh, that I paid someone to go look at the yeah, yeah, yeah. Was the that G wagon? Yeah, the G wagon. Yeah, was that in the southern part of the uh, nation as well? Yes, and it was the Albanians <laughs> that oh, the guy said these Albanian guys seem great, but let me tell you, this car was titled five times in different lives, different in past lives. Now, when so, a car is retitled, God. is that because it has to be like what, uh, just so modified that it's uh, and so repaired? I'm just that's curious what most about people that. would want you to think. A modification is not a total loss and then retitled. Oh, really? So it had it, been it, it, it'd be it could, totaled. It could, it could, the the G wagon had been. This let's go back to the convertible at okay. the dealer. What's the problem with the convertible? He said there seems to be one report of an airbag deployment, but we can't confirm if it was a extreme airbag deployment or a moderate airbag deployment. And I said, Well, what is usually what is an airbag deployment usually uh so he goes, a front end collision. I said, Does a front end collision usually you know, result in some sort of frame damage. I heard that's bad. He goes, Dad, I got the new car. Turn her over. See how she works. So I call my dad. Yes. <laughs> and he says, he goes, uh, what was the offer? Because he's like, he's, my dad wants to make a transaction. He wants me to make the transaction. He wants me he to. He likes the p- deal too. He wants, yeah, me, to, likes a good he wants me to pick him up in a convertible. Right. From Dulles, in, the most inconvenient airport to pick someone up at. John um, Foster Dulles International. Mike. So I said, dad, I don't, uh, this is, está, es, tiene un, uh, Un, un, algo, 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 algo con un limón and ta, 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 ta. And he's like, how bad is the lemon? And I said, well, <laughs> I said, I haven't even test drove it that because I figured you'd say, I don't want the lemon, right? I don't need this. Did he ask in Spanish how bad yes, is the yes, lemon? Yes, yeah, like how bad is the lemon? And I said, limón. Limón. He goes, mm. And then he gives me a number to give back to them. Mind you, I'm I'm living my own life here. I'm on a stoop giving out candy. My dog's dressed up as a dragon, and I'm like transition, like having transactions with the dealer. And my dad's overseas. All and, this happened because you got the tires rotated. Yes. <laughs> and I said, 
dad, listen, if you buy this car, you're not going to be able to resell it. And he goes, Oscar, if I buy this car, there's no reselling anything. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so? So I, I sent the number back and I'm waiting for the, the dealer to, to answer. So my dad is willing to buy, in his 80s, a Lemon Law car. Is the car to look at, the photographs, is uh, it a nice-looking automobile? It's, it, looks like, it looks like sex on wheels. Wow. Yeah. What do you think? Do you roll the bones on it? Do you think? No. No. I, I said I, I do not sanction this purchase. Okay. Do not do this. This is crazy. But uh, it's so not let me your tell money. You it's your dad's it's money. not my money. Goes, I'm not going to tell him what to do. Just so you know, yes. if a snowplow backs into you, your <laughs> airbags do not deploy. <laughs> if you flip your car, the airbags deploy. Right. So I think what you're looking at is something between a, a fender bender and a total disaster. And will, find will he at least, if he makes the decision that he wants to go for it, do you think he'll at least uh, have, or will you probably end up sending, uh, having somebody before the papers or paperwork's done, have a, re- a reputable mechanic do a, a once over? That is, that was uh, my, I said, I will go this weekend and test drive it if that's what you it's want. It's available. It's it's local. It's local. Yes, it's local. Uh, yeah. That's the okay. the one. He goes, go look at it. I said, I, I said, it, the guy already told me like there's another one that they can certify. Um, as a pre-owned Mercedes. Slightly more expensive. Yes. And he goes, oh, no, that's not in my budget. But this one is. I said, because it's, re- it's, it's retitled, Dad. Like, this is, not, this is not who you are, you know? I get All the right. feeling if you were to scrape at the Mercedes logo, you'd find the word Kia. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned. We'll, uh, I'd like to hear an update on that next yes. week. Yes. Really and there's would. nothing like buying a convertible in the middle of winter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, and it's our first cold week ever, so have fun with that test drive. Clangity-yangity. Uh, <laughs> driving along. Oh, man, cars are fun. Cars are super fun. Yeah, the guy that was at my house last night, he just got a new one. <laughs> I won't. Uh, we'll be right back, everybody. Guess what? It's finally All Saints Day. Yay. So, you Catholics, get ready to celebrate Drew Brees and Pat Swilling. Both mm. great, but they're getting older, and it shows. Learn from their mistakes. Take care of your face. Mm. Why not try complimentary virtual skin consultations and self-care appointments at dermglowskin.com. Grab Carla's Beauty Bundle, 11 travel size products that give you the perfect skincare routine for the morning and the night. It's on sale right now. For $60, get it at dermglowskin.com. Carla's travel kits are perfect for hitting the road or as a great sampling of Carla's skincare products. Dermglow ships everywhere and features afterpay. So make the pampering esthetician a part of your self-love journey. And be sure to remember that Dermglow is a proud partner with Hot Shops. Be sure to stop in for a Mighty Mo <laughs> and a mug of ice-cold root beer. What the hell is a Mighty Mo? A Mighty Mo is like a Big Mac is served at the... Uh... At the Hot Shops, which is owned by Marion. Mighty Mo. Uh, <laughs> you're a Mighty Mo. And don't forget a quart of pineapple ice cream. It tastes like <laughs> yesteryear. Thank you, Derm Glow. All right, speaking of my lovely bride. Yes. Um, sometimes when I'm doing my show prep, and she's uh, busy with her socials that she's doing every day, uh, I will say, uh, eh, I'm a little late this morning, honey. Anything you want me to uh, mention on the show, whoa, whoa? Uh, uh, she says, oh, and, 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 and she goes through a few things. Now, you don't hear all the cruel things that are said or the nice things or the wonderful things that are said uh, by Carla to me or vice versa. But I will tell you this, that uh, for a long period of time, Carla has been a tad... Uh, wrapped up with a part of my body that she thinks I can fix. I don't believe that it's something I would choose to fix or want to fix, but she wants me. When you me. say fix, you don't yes. mean like at a veterinarian, do you? No, perhaps at a, uh, a surgeon of some kind. Yeah, I was going to say, surgeon. like when you get your dog fixed, it's not anything like that. No. You no, know okay. about plastic surgery? God, do I. Carla wants me to fix my earlobes. You have mentioned this in the past. Yeah. And me, yeah, I've done the for, whole bit where those, I fold them under. Yes, but right. for those at home, have you, if you've ever seen, uh, if you've ever been to the 930 Club or any type of, uh, let's say, alternative. Hip outlet, yes. Yeah. And then you see the like the earring inside the lobe. They're called gauges. Thank you. 
it's like Mike did that in a past life, and then he removed the gauge. I'm not yeah. going to disagree with that. I'm not. And, and the by the way, belt didn't go all the way back into the holder. Yes. Yeah. In mm-hmm. certain Asian cultures, this is considered. <sighs> Yeah, but that's a sign of a, prosperity but, and good fortune. You're this not is, in an Asian culture, yes. Mike. And you usually know. they rub the statue on the belly. So if yes. I can combine the neck lift with oh, the this is, yeah, this is a you very look, you slippery look so much younger. Hi, everybody. You do. Hey, Nobody would then, know. <laughs> You're going to go to the plastic surgeon and you could have him say, I would like to look at the opportunity to fix one earlobe. And he'll have you up to seven procedures so fast, your head will spin. I don't want to do it. It's very do dangerous. Do it for your wife. Do it for your wife. You know what? I, I I like being presentable. You got skinny for your wife. Yeah. Uh, not skinny, but I've lost uh, over 60 well pounds. Well over 60 pounds. 62, 63 pounds. You're just going to, so. now your world, uh, 60 pounds three years ago would have been like, we would have been taking laps of a victory. Oh, my God. But, you know, as you know. And if you take those lobes off, Mike, it'd be 65 pounds. I, I'm thinking 70. about, you know, these are so big, and I don't How like them How big are they? They are so big, I saw a robin, you know. <laughs> no. No, I just, uh, I get my lobes done. Oh, have Joe. you Have you Googled? Like plastic lobe surgery? I have not. I maybe I will tonight, and maybe I will give you an update tomorrow as far as uh, you know what. Do I don't any, know that. I think I would. About. I would have a hard time getting used to it. I think. I think you would look. I know because I can make them right now normal. Watch okay. this. I fold them under, just like this. Jam this one. That's how big they are. I can fold them in half and put them behind. Let's see. I'm em. not exaggerating. I can put them. Oh behind no! You look elfish ear. now. I look what? Elfish. You look like you on the Hobbit. Um, yeah. Um, Middle Earth? Like if, no, but if you you should be on the coastline looking at the guys leaving yeah. on a boat. You know what's going to happen? You're going to say that, and the plastic surgeon is going to say, you know what? We should also pin them back and lift your chin. Yeah. See, I don't have the ears I'd go for the out. chin lift before the ears. But here's the thing. Well, I think the, the surgery, if you're just going to chop off some skin and sew it together, you don't need this for anything on the ear. It's just dead skin, is it not? Really? Not dead skin, but it's just... How do it's they remove a skin. how do they remove a skin tag? I don't know how that works. They burn it off usually, or freeze okay. it off. They freeze it. All right. off. Maybe they do that. the same thing for net for your I use a, when I have a skin tag. I use a champagne saber. I watched. Uh, I don't know how my feed puts <clears throat> these uh, things up. Uh, that uh, I saw a cyst being tended to on a pregnant oh, woman on her yeah. back, and oh my god! Wow, he like does this uh, little pin prick, pin prick, pin prick, prick, and then he takes the scalpel and he opens it and then. Bleh. That's sometimes like Doctor Pimple Popper. That yeah, type I, of thing. I get those yeah, on have. my TikTok sometimes, and you mm-hmm. watch one, and then they come like. Well, a I don't want to hear you talking about your penis again. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Okay? <laughs> again, <laughs> honey, look what I've got on my TikTok. Oh, I don't want to see that. I'll keep you posted. I would get a it. consultation just to see what it is. Get yeah. a consultation with a plastic surgeon. Hey, slicky boy, how you doing? All right. <laughs> I don't yeah. think you're in pl- show business. You're in show business. I'm close to Naples, Florida. We just don't have any plastic surgeons. Exactly. Down here. Yeah. Uh, We'll be back with more fun and thrills on the Michael Mel flip side coming up later. Did it click? All right. This podcast is sponsored by Naked Wines. Naked Wines is a subscription service that connects you to the finest independent winemakers on the planet. So you get wine as often as you like for a fraction of the price you pay in stores. I have to tell you, my personal experience with this wine, I have never had a bad bottle of wine from mm. Naked Wines. They are winners. And you get them for a fraction of the price you pay in stores. Up to 60% off. I cannot believe they sell this great wine for this price. I got a Cabernet Sauvignon that knocked my socks off. Uh, the notes in it were, I, I really, I do get this. I drink enough wine to know. Cherry, chocolate, that kind of uh, mm. wonderful, robust taste that mm. I love. Delish. Uh, even made Halloween acceptable because I had one with Din Din. Uh, it's the best part. Here's the best part. Every bottle is a passion project from an independent winemaker, so you are literally making an independent winemaker's dream come true, which is very, very cool. So head to nakedwines.com slash TMOS and click Enter Voucher. 
in the top, top right hand when you go to the website. Then enter TMOS for both the code and the password to get six bottles of wine for just thirty nine ninety nine with shipping included. That's one hundred dollars off and less than seven dollars a bottle nakedwines.com slash tmos use the code and password tmos to grab six bottles for 39.99 nakedwines.com slash tmos code and password tmos that gets you your one hundred dollars off your first six bottles enjoy 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 All right, you guys were uh, telling me I'm selfish for not doing Halloween, but you know I have my reasons, and we talked about it yesterday, and imagine my shock and surprise when last night Stephen Colbert stole my bit. Mm. He makes a lot of sense. Okay. And I just want to issue a quick public service message to all the kids out there, young people. When you arrive at a stranger's house, remember, you have to say trick or treat or you get nothing. <laughs> when kids come to my door and just hold out their bags silently, I say, what do you say? And if they say, please, <laughs> I shut the door. Because <laughs> that's not how any of this works, okay? There is a clear social contract. You are there to represent a spirit, a demon sent to terrify me with eldritch horrors. And I will fend you off with a supplication of sweets, representing earlier cultures' animal sacrifices to the elder gods. A, a treat to stop your trick. How hard is that for children to understand? <laughs> I'm not the bad guy here. You get raisins. <laughs> Sorry, there have to be rules. There That's have to right. be well rules. That's You're so right. true, well though. Both of yeah, you are well right. Done. Fantastic. That's a great All idea. All right, so they made a discovery when they were excavating an Aztec development. And they found something that they took a while to identify what it was. They figured it out. But because it was from the 14th century, they didn't want to use it for what it was intended for. So they did a 3D printing. Oscar, the 3D printing you talked about earlier, it's amazing. It's called an Aztec death whistle. Mm. And uh, if you think this isn't horrifying, I don't understand you. Because when you have this thing, you can party like it's 1399. This has been deemed the most terrifying sound in the world. <laughs> this is called an Aztec death whistle. And that's what it looks like. It's just like a whistle. It's like a head. And when you blow it, it makes that scream sound. How fantastic is that? Oh, I got to pick one of those up for the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'd love to have one, like right to my right, you know? Wasn't there... Um... Was it Bone Tomahawk? Yes. Oh, right. Dark that has movie. similar had Dark a similar movie. yes whistle yes. to it. Weird movie. Weird. I'd go back and yeah. watch that again. That was a dark movie. You want to see something really Corey. freaky, scary, <laughs> nasty. Mike, I've got uh, a new hero for us all. His name is Dollarita Steve. And Dollarita was, Steve. Yeah. Now, do, are you Dollarita familiar? is like at uh, TGI Fridays, right? I believe it's Applebee's. Applebee's. And I'm so terribly sorry. TGI Fridigans. Yeah. Well, Steve was at Applebee's when San Francisco had an earthquake this week, a pretty big one. Mm. And he went on to the local news because he was slamming Dollaritas. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you San Francisco's Dollarita Steve. Dollaritas up at the Applebee's and uh, with my friends, and it was a it was a big shake. It was only like only a couple seconds, but it was real. Everyone like stopped talking. Yeah, it was it was heavy. It was a big one. Yeah. How big do you think it was? It was probably. I'm not really good with this. I'm gonna guess it's only like a three. A three? Yeah, I'm gonna tell around that. Three. Yeah. It was a 3.9. Ooh, that's heavy. All right, fair enough. That's a good one. Yeah, that might yeah. be the biggest one that I've ever felt. Yeah. yeah. Actually, was He's swaying. Really? He's swaying. He is swaying. Oh, and people, he started the interview saying like, he's yeah, slamming Dollaritas. Cool. Everyone stopped talking, and everyone had that same, like, oh, is, is that what I think it is? And then you had that moment where you're like, is it going to stop? But, uh, yeah, so then, and then it passed, and then everyone, so people were excited. Some people were like, like, oh, that's my first one. But, uh, but yeah, no, people, people freaked out for like, for like one second. There was like a moment of panic, yeah. And have you felt earthquakes before? Yeah, I, f I felt a couple. Yeah, I, I lived here for six years. I felt a few. So, that, that, that's definitely one of the bigger ones I felt. Six yeah. years. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate it. All right, Dal Rita's back. Yeah. There he goes. And then he, <laughs> and then he, then he rushed off 
to his Groucho Marx lookalike contest. Yes. I know. Yes. But anyway, I, that was such a popular. He They used a small clip of that in the news coverage of the uh, Earth. Dollarita Steve. He was so popular that the news station actually posted his entire clip because they got enough letters. Mike, let's mm. close with this. All right. I have to tell you this. Granny is displeased. And this is obviously, I believe, obviously in Europe. I think it's probably in England. They brought her a gift that she did not want, a wheelchair. She did not take it well, but I always say it's the thought that counts. I hope you got something better in my back, because you can shove that where the bloody sun goes down. How's that? Bloody marvelous. Now piss off all of you. I don't want no wheelchair, whoever it's for. Jesus Christ, I've never seen anything like it in my bloody life, you cheeky lot of cows. Well, I, I'm not bloody well, but I don't want a pissing wheelchair. Well, I, when, when, what? We thought you could think again. When we went to the hospital, it would be much easier to get you to the car rather than do what we did. Piss balls to you. That's right. Piss balls to you, Mike. That's Piss all I have balls, today. balls, Granny. That's awesome. Yes, but Grandma, <laughs> you're gonna get into the hospital a lot quicker. You know. Piss we, balls to you. Joe's on the phone for you. He'll tell you it's good. <laughs> hey, Grandma, it's gonna be fine. Yeah, come on. Uh, that's it. We got to get out of here. We'll be back with a brand new episode tomorrow for Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana, Mike McIntosh, Michael Mara saying so long, everybody. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Michael Mara Bonus Show. Get it at michaelmarashow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Sabrina, don't just stare at it, eat it. <laughs> 